people often say that, that traveling abroad, it's noticeable um, the degree of reverence for science yes. um, that is it, it, as compared to in the United States and that the inculcation, whether it's through the education system or through the sort of uh, the notion of, of professional aspiration, is there something, I mean, you know, to hear a story of the, even in, you know, in regimes that don't necessarily, you know, in other instances may not be committed to sort of openness of intellectual inquiry, what is it in the United States, you think, that has made that somewhat lacking and lacking? Well, I, I don't think it was always that way. So growing up in the 1950s, people my age here will remember Sunday evening television. What's the most popular show? The Disney show. And the Disney show was structured on the, the Magic Kingdom, you know, the Fantasy Land was a cartoon show. Adventure Land, Frontier Land, and then Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland, the fourth program of the month, was about science and technology. And I, res I recall distinctly as a child hearing Werner von Braun lecture about rocketry with demonstrations which were really captivating. Glenn Seaborg, the Berkeley chemist, gave a demonstration of the chain chemical chain reaction. He had a mouse trap with a ping pong ball. He set it off the ball flies. And then the camera comes to a room, maybe the size of this room, with the floor covered with mouse traps, each set with a ping pong ball. He throws in a ball, two, four, eight, within seconds, it's a cloud of flying. I mean, anybody who saw that will never forget it. So I think we've kind of gone away from that. Life is now more complicated. They're not just three networks, they're hundreds of networks. Uh, we have some distractions which are good and many distractions that are not so good. And I think the scientists, we ourselves, have not done a very good job of kind of adjusting our public image. I think if you ask a lot of high school kids to draw a picture of a scientist, they'll draw a picture of Doc from the movie Back to the Future. <laughs> You've heard of that crazy <laughs> hair. It's, it's unfortunate. I know a few people like that, but most of my colleagues are not like that. They're, they're sort of able to walk and chew gum at the and, same and time. I think, if I may, I'd like to insert a note of optimism. Because in my, in my lifetime as a scientist, there's been a huge change in the demographics of science, the emergence of women in science. More than half of our graduate students are women. They have somewhat different, you know, there's some differences in terms of interest and, and, and focus, but uh, we've got now twice the talent pool. And good things are happening. The year before last, I believe five women shared Nobel Prizes. I mean, that never happened before. And it's, 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 I think it's here to stay. So I think uh, there, there are reasons to be optimistic. And I think a lot of the discussions about you know, the decline of the United States and the emergence of China and Brazil and India are, are real. But who is doing the really best in this country? What is the ethnic group that is most successful in terms of per capita family in income is the Asian Americans. One generation here, great things happen. And I think this is a group that has put tremendous emphasis on education. So I, you know, we're, we're a nation of immigrants. We always have been. What is it Tom Brokaw said? We're a nation of immigrants. We have always been able to find our center. If we can find our center politically and encourage the, the talented people to follow the fancies, good things can happen.